Okay, praise God. I have spoke with some of you and I'm ready to do this. Um, I want to do this and let you know where you go as a Christian when you pass away from this earth. I never say die because we don't die. You know, I explained it as like as if you cut your fingernail off. That's part of you, right? That fingernail is part of who you are. But when you clip it off, that's like our body, our bodies. But we are very much alive, very aware. Let's use my mother, for example. I know that she um, was born again Christian. And I know that right before she left this earth, she really prayed to Jesus. And she was very serious because I did it with her. And um, my stepfather, too, he did the same thing. So they were very serious about giving their life to the Lord. And I know they did. So I know where they are. Plus, Jesus let me see my mother. Okay. And it was about a month and a half, maybe two months ago, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And then he let me see her as she is. Okay. And she loved to have her hair done. She loved to wear beautiful clothes. And she was just like that. Okay. Except for when we spoke, she knew who I was, but when we spoke, I've never seen my mom smile like that ever. I'm talking about pure bliss. Okay. She was happy and she was at one with God. Everything she spoke was about the Lord. So she's where we're supposed to be, okay? Will I know her when I get there? Absolutely. But let's get back on this. So when Jesus died on the cross, he told the thief on the cross, today, this day, you're going to be with me in paradise. They had The Bible says they had to go down into the earth where paradise used to be because all those souls from the Old Testament died. They went here to paradise because God is up there. They could not get to God the first person to ever, the first being to ever die and get into heaven was Jesus Christ. First one ever to resurrect. Okay. So when Jesus died, he went down into the belly of the earth where paradise was. And he told all those saints that were there because the catacombs of hell are here. The flake of fire is not there yet. It's, I mean, it's there, but nobody's in it yet till after judgment. People are in their little catacombs down into the earth. But the Christians, before Jesus, went to paradise. So Jesus went down in the belly of the earth. He got those people. He preached and told them who he was, that this is him. I'm the Messiah you've heard about, and I'm taking you to God now. So he emptied out paradise. He emptied it out. The Bible's clear. He took them up into heaven, but Jesus had to be the first one to get into heaven, and he was. Now the paradise is empty. They're all here with God, literally. And that's where, if you have a family member that's moved on, that's, if they are with Jesus, that's where they are. And heaven is a real place, very real place. It's not so imaginary, um, made up place. It's real. And the, the word says it's not that far away from us, okay? To us, it seems like it is. But let's get back on it. So, Jesus has been in heaven since um his ascension, okay, since he floated up to heaven after he resurrected. The Bible tells us that angels are in heaven. In fact, there's thousands and thousands of them, uh, uncountable numbers, okay? All of God's saints are in heaven. It's a real place. The Old Testament and the New Testament saints, for example, like I said, my mother, my stepdad, and I know my grandmother's there. I don't know anything much about my grandfather, but I know that on my grandmother's deathbed, she asked my mama's friend to forgive her. So she got herself right. So I know she's there. Okay. So they are together. Okay. They, they are together and they're, it's so hard for us to fathom this because we miss them here. Of course we do, but where they are, they don't want to come back here. No way. They're ha they're in bliss land. They're in happy land, blissful happy land. That's what keeps me going. Okay. Cause I know where she's at and I know what about she's doing. Okay. And I know that she's happy. And I also know the promise that I get to see her again forever. And I look forward to that every day, every day. So, um, will we know each other in heaven? First Corinthians 13 two says, yes, we will. When we get to heaven, we will know each other as God knows us because all of the imperfections of this life will be removed. In this life, sin causes us to cover ourselves, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. Okay. But when sin is lifted from us, then we can be ourselves with no shame, no pain, no embarrassment, no covering up. Okay. 
we will know our loved ones in heaven and everybody else that's there too. So what are they doing in heaven? Well, let's take a look at this. Let's go down here to a glimpse of heaven. So a glimpse of heaven is an actual place. It's a real place. John 14, 1, 5, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, not an imaginary fake cloud, a real place. This was God's, what he intended for us since the beginning of creation, for us to be with him. And it's going to happen. Okay. So heaven is a city made of pure gold. Okay. It's, there's an emerald rainbow that encircles the throne. The city is as clear as crystal. Okay. It's very transparent. There is a golden altar. There is um, the city's fountain. There's a, let me tell you something. There's a light in heaven. I, I know I've dreamed about heaven two times that I know of. Okay. And I tried to draw it. I don't know how to draw it. But um, hold on. And, and I, when I almost, now, when I almost died in the hospital, I haven't told you all about this. I had pneumonia really bad. And well, I was in the, I, the first night I got put in the hospital, I was in there for three days with really bad pneumonia. The first night in there, um, my blood pressure was really low, y'all, really low. And I heard in my hospital room, uh, up around the, the corners of the ceiling, you know, a whole band of angels singing the most beautiful song I ever heard. It was so loud. It was so real. I called the nurse. Could you please have them turn this, turn that TV down in that room? It's too loud. My head's about to bust. She says, There's nobody in those rooms. And it was in my room, y'all. But anyway, I, I dreamed that I saw a mountain. I can't draw a mountain with beautiful trees, okay, standing here. And I was right here. And I saw an angel of God up here. I can't draw, okay, looking down at me. And I'm right here, okay. And I saw a beautiful river flow, just, what do you call it, waterfall, flowing off of that mountain. And I'm looking at this. And I know... All I saw was that. That's the only thing that was there was the tree, the flowing river, and that angel up there. And I knew it was because it went into a big, beautiful pool down here. Like, a, like I don't know how to explain it. But it was like diamond-y, crystal-y. It was beautiful. And I was standing there just looking up, watching it. You know, and I don't know what that means. But I saw it, and I knew what that was. And I knew this was flowing from the, from the throne of God. So there's real things going on there in heaven. There's real people there. Um, <coughs> my mother's there. What are they doing up there? They worship without distraction. They serve without exhaustion. There's fellowship without fear. Um, they learn without fatigue and they rest without being bored. Music like you've never heard. There's activity there, y'all. It's not just people floating around on clouds or just floating around. There is is a very active place. And heaven is very busy right now preparing for the return of Jesus and the new heaven on earth. They are preparing. And what's happening to, like my mother, for example, she is waiting on this to happen. The new heaven, to this earth to be destroyed, a new heaven on earth, or new heaven. She's waiting for it because that's when the graves will come open and she will get her body. Her body... Is going to come out from the, you know, wherever and, and meet her spirit in the air. And she's going to get her new body back. And the Bible says it's of flesh and bone. Okay. The new bodies we will have in heaven for eternity. So right now she is here. She has her memory. She knows who I am. She thinks. She talks. She acts. She does. She's still doing. She's still there. The only thing that went was this flesh and bone. Okay, she will get a new body when Jesus comes back and that trumpet sounds and those bodies come up out of the grave. It will meet their spirit in the air and get their glorified body like Adam and Eve have, like we were supposed to have. Okay, and we will walk the rest of our time on the new earth with our flesh and bones. The Bible says bodies, new bodies. But right now, what is she doing? Is she missing me or missing her children? No. What she's doing is she's expecting us to come anytime. She's like, I have four children. They should be here any minute. And then she's going on about doing her thing. She's enjoying heaven. She's in heaven, y'all. So it's a very active place. And I know that the Bible describes the gates made of pearl. There's 12 gates for the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, it's a real place. It's not phony baloney. It's very real. And you and I are not promised 
to to wake up tomorrow morning. We're not. And we're either going to go down into our little catacombs until judgment day and wait for the pits of hell to open up or we're going to go straight up to God. One of those two places we're going to go. No in between. This place isn't there anymore. Jesus done cleaned that out. Okay, he cleaned out paradise. That is, now they're straight with God himself, where the throne is, where the rivers of living water, the tree of life. There's real people there, y'all, doing real things. And that's why every day, you don't know how Jesus has protected my mind. Jesus has protected me because I'm my mama's baby. Okay, and she and I was very, very close. We spent every day together until our, her last year of life. I had major surgery that took a year to recuperate from. So I didn't get to spend a lot of time with her that last year. But before that, before my surgery, and she was, everything was good. We spent every day together for years. Yeah. So we were very close, very close. I was her baby. Okay. And, and I knew I would have a hard time. But you know what? Jesus has let me see it for what it is. I see it for what it is. I know where she's at. I know what she's doing. And I know I get to see her again. And I know she's happier than she's ever been. Do I miss her? Of course I do. That's my mother, you know. But I know what she's doing. And I know it's more real. And I know she has not forgotten me and us, her kids. She has not forgotten us. Absolutely not. She's expecting us anytime. She's expecting us. And that's what's glorious about it, y'all, is we have a promise from Jesus, to see them again, to be with them again. It's not the end. It's not over. No. And nobody could ever tell me, well, it's over. It's the end. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm looking for that day when I get to go see my family again forever, y'all. And it's going to happen. And Jesus has me focused on this. That's how I'm able to make it. That's how I'm able to smile sometimes. That's how I'm able to laugh sometimes because I know my mom is safe. And I never say thank you, Jesus, for taking my mom. I say thank you, Jesus, every day. Thank you, Jesus, for taking care of my mother. Thank you for keeping her safe and protecting her. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see her very soon. There you go. And I will. That's not just talk. That's for real, people. If you lost a loved one that you know is in heaven, that's what you got to do. Because that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Okay. So I just wanted to get that out there. That heaven is not some phony, baloney place. You do not lay in your corpse until Jesus comes back. No. You are at the, look absent from the body. Present with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. It's as plain as it could be, and I know that to be a fact. And I know there's nobody laying in a rotten, decayed body. They're not trapped in there. They're free of this flesh. They're free. And just like you cut your fingernail off, your fingernail's over there on the floor now, just like your body, but you're still here. You think, you know, you talk, you know what's going on. It's the same thing. Just they're in heaven glory man that's where we all want to go so what do you do you miss your loved one you get your life right with god and you focus on his word and you focus on god and you get yourself there with your loved one and with jesus christ okay and he will give you the peace of mind like you couldn't even imagine you could ever have it only comes from jesus that's it You can't do it without Jesus. You can't make it. If you lose a loved one, you cannot make it and still live a happy, fruitful life without Jesus. Because you know, when you have Jesus, you know where your loved one is, what they're doing, and you're closer to them than ever before. And you got the promise that you're going to be with them again for eternity. It's not the end. It's not over. People will tell you it's over. No. No, for them, it's the beginning. And it's real. It's not fake. It's real, people. It's very real. All right. I don't know how more to tell you, but um, I'm going to see my mom again. And I'm looking forward to the day. And I can't wait. And I know she's waiting on me to get there. She's waiting. And I will. All right. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, just ask him. Ask him. And And if you're going through things in your life, if you lost a loved one or something, and you know that they were saved and... Let me tell you something. 
Give Jesus a try. My God, he is sustaining my, he's protecting my brain. He's protecting my mind more than anybody ever has. You know, when my mama went to heaven, I lost my entire family the same day. Okay. It's, it's the whole thing. Five people. Okay. And Jesus has kept me safe and protected. He has protected me through this y'all and he is what's getting me through it. You got to give it to Jesus. You've got to. He will keep you safe and protect you like you don't know what. Okay. And in Jesus name, go get to know him. Give your life to him because we're all going to face here or we're going to go down here. One of the two. You understand? It's the truth. It's there or there. There's no other way around it. No other way around it. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Get right with Jesus right now and go get your peace of mind, your sanity, and get a little bit of happiness in your life that Satan's trying to steal your joy. Jesus will give it to you. He'll say, your loved one's fine. They're protected. I got them. They're good. But you worry about you. Do you want to see them again? Get yourself right. Get yourself right. I mean, that's all you got to do. And you will feel the protection like you don't know what, y'all. I'm serious. Get Stay in the word. Get in the word. Stay in it. Stay in it. Not just one hour a day. If you can get in it more than that, get in it. Stay in it. And he will fill you up. And you will know. And every night you can go to bed and say, Jesus, thank you for taking care of my loved one. Thank you so much for keeping them happy and safe and out of harm's way. Thank you. Until I see them again. In Jesus' name. You understand? All right, y'all. God bless each one of you and stay safe and go get to know the Lord. Go get him every day. Get to know him more and more and more and more and more. All right. God bless y'all.